229913 is called. Your Claudia Brown mentor. What? Is that yes? Okay. And you are here with Miss Mantellini, your attorney and the state's attorney. There is in 229913 a motion to revoke unadjudicated probation. Does the defendant uh, waive a formal reading of this? Can we proceed in summary? Yes, sir. In summary, ma'am. This motion to revoke probation filed on August 31st of this year, last year, 2023, alleges that on July 10th of last year, that you were placed on 10 years deferred or unadjudicated probation for the first degree felony of arson of a habitation. Is all of that true? Yeah, and so anything about Shiloh? What? Shiloh heard she said. What'd she say? What all of this really is, and the court. What you she just said? What you heard? She, or, or, I'm not. Look, Your Honor. Look, you're going to go back and no. tell, I, I don't understand what said, you're what not you sensible. Say, what? You can go back. We'll deal with you here in a little while. Okay. Thank you. No, Let's go to Jerry McGee no, next. You have to act civilized in this courtroom, ma'am. That's bizarre. Another bizarre situation here to bring in the new year. Jerry McGee, 23 CR 2094. I'm sorry, what's the name again? Jerry McGee. 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 You know, that one's going to be best if we just move to have a hearing on it, I think. That's not your business? No. Okay, so he's not on Booker anymore, correct? Okay. It's, okay, so Danielle Davis. What are we doing on that? And then Pedro Garza. I'm ready on Garza. That's, what are you doing on Garza? Oh, that's that, That's That's going to be, a, I had it with Mr. Ham, and I think he's going to you. It's a, you know, MTRP, right? Yeah. Well, what are we doing with Danielle Davis? Now, Daniel Davis, I believe that they want to look at. What do you want to well, I believe Mr. Booker's probably going to be on the trial docket, Your Honor, uh, with the offer in that case. Uh, and Miss Davis would. What do you want to do with Daniel Davis? Uh, right. We could just reset or see where we're at. All right, just reset. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm ready for Pedro Garza. I'm ready right now. Pedro Garza? He's here. He's here. Three, four, five, eight, two. Thank you. Pedro Garza, your honor to the judge. We now call 20 34582, the state of Texas versus Pedro Garza Jr. That's you, sir. Yes, there, is sir. A, there is a first amended motion to revoke unadjudicated probation here. What are we going to do today? He's ready to uh, in his plea on that. Unagreed? Yes, sir. All right. In, does the defendant waive a formal reading of this? Can we proceed in summary? Yes, sir. And raise your right hand, sir. Do you solemnly swear or affirm any statements you make today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So yes, help you lies. Lower your hand. In summary, this first amended motion to revoke unadjudicated probation in this case filed on September 25th of 2023. In summary states that on November 1st, 2021, you were placed on 10 years deferred or unadjudicated probation for aggravated assault in this case. Is that true? Yes, sir. Allegation. Stand by. We haven't had a hearing on any of this before. No. We yep. did, Judge. We did. We pleaded true to allegations one, two, and three. Yes, sir. 
back on February 27th, 2023. And what happened on that? I don't know what you did on that day. Did you, um, you granted our motion that you continued the matter and held them in advance? You set it up for review for every 90 days at that stage. Okay. So let's go to allegation uh, under first amended number five. This states that you failed to report to the Jefferson County Probation Office for the months of July and August of 2023 in violation of your probation order. Is that true or untrue? That is true, sir. Six, you failed to report to the criminal district court, this court, as required on or about July 27th, 2023. Is that true or untrue? Specifically, that would have been the review hearing, Jeff. Was scheduled for that day. Last week, so. I wasn't told about that. Number seven, you provided a urine sample on or about May 15th, 2023, which showed the presence of methamphetamine and amphetamine in your system. Is that true? That is true, sir. And I was. Hey, hold on. You'll get a chance to explain. Hey, you provided a urine sample on or about July 27th, 2023 which showed the uh, metabolic byproducts of methamphetamine in your system on that date, which is in violation of your probation order. Is that true? That is true, sir. Are you pleading true to allegations five, seven, and eight, as alleged in this first amended motion to revoke probation that we have reviewed with you that you pleaded true to, are you pleading true voluntarily? knowingly intelligently and because those allegations are indeed true i am sir do you understand by a knowing and voluntary plea of truth to an allegation of probation that is enough to grant this motion to revoke probation by preponderance of the evidence or greater your probation can be revoked and you can be found guilty and sentenced up to the full range of a punishment in this case, aggravated assault is a second degree felony. So you're looking at no less than two, no more than 20 years confinement in prison and a fine up to $10,000 can be assessed. Knowing that, do you insist on pleading true today? I do, sir. I find you pleading true voluntarily. You understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading true. Now I'm gonna make one a change here. You were not fined any uh, money on the original uh, finding of uh, placing you on probation. However, restitution was ordered in the amount of $13,256.10. And where are we on that? Never? No, Nothing's been paid on that? Nothing's been paid since. No, how much has been paid toward? Uh, $16.50. $1,650 has been paid toward restitution. Toward restitution. Oh, okay. I see where we are. Go ahead. There's no agreement. Go ahead, Ms. Grabs. All right. The first amendment motion to revoke your unadjudicated probation, you see that that's filed on September 25th, 2023, to the top. All right. And I think Mr. Helms has mentioned that you were in court, I believe, in July, Mr. Helms said. No, it was February. It was July. It was July. Well, you're supposed to show up in court yeah. for July. And then prior to July, I believe the testimony was when Judge Stevens had a review. And that would have been in what? February, right? I believe it's February. It was February. All right. Uh, I'm here to answer your question, sir. So, <laughs> you want me to put him on the road? No. So, I guess my question to you is: is this when you had a hearing, the judge uh, had opportunity to say that, "Hey, we're going to continue to be on supervision. We're going to review it." What happened when? What happened when you got out in out of jail? What were you doing? I was looking for a job, and I went to go stay with my uh, with my brother. He didn't have any more room there. Okay, so and then I, I, I and about I, what month is this? Uh, 
around March. Okay, so you you go stay with your brother in March, and then what happens when you get to your brother? Um, I was staying there, and you know, looking for work. Okay, so were you able to find work? What did you go look for? Um, at, at like golf copper, some restaurants. Okay, did they did they hire you or not hire no, you? They didn't. Okay, so. When they didn't hire you, did you try to find any other work? Yes. And where did you try to find work? Like uh, painting, painting houses. Did you do that? Yes, sir, for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And the money that you made with painting houses, what did you do with that money? Uh, I, I was, at that point, um, I was like basically surviving blind and getting food, and I didn't have nowhere to stay. I had okay. to move out of my brother's house. Now I know you're staying with your homeless. brother. I know you're staying with your brother in March. Okay. How long do you stay with your brother from March until when? About so let's say April, you're homeless now, right? Yeah. And with you being homeless, uh, where do you live? I was staying, um, basically surviving. I staying by the court author in. And just trying to, and still looking for work and using the port author trans transit system mm -hmm. to get from point A to point B. And when I didn't have any money, mm -hmm. I do I was eating at the soup kitchen. And mm -hmm. I've stayed. I was staying outside. And so, with you using whatever money you could get to meet your necessities, yes. As far as your court assessed fees, did you have any extra money to be able to pay toward that? I hardly had any. Okay. And would you hardly have any money? What, what, did you Could you borrow any money from anybody? Everybody. Did you try to borrow money? My family it wasn't here at the time, but I didn't even try to grow them. And did you have any property that you could sell to pay towards your fees? Not much. So, and then with the, I see on the first amendment, in its amended uh, paragraph five, how they said that you failed to report in July and August, did you have transportation to report? No, I didn't. Did you have anybody that would bring you the report? Everybody was busy. All the time, and then with number six, where it says fail to uh, show up uh, to the criminal district court on about July 27, 2023. What happened with that? I didn't receive anything at my at my stepdad's saying that I had a fever or anything like that. Nobody ever told me before. Oh, I'm waiting on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you're saying that you didn't have any notice about that no. July 27 here. Okay. And then on seven and eight, uh, you admitted that you did test positive for the methamphetamine on uh, May the 15th. And I see another date is July the 27th for the methamphetamine. Could you explain to the court what happened there? I was staying on the street. And these people, like I told my probation officer, that you know, I was staying in these apartments called Lewis Manners. And I was staying in an abandoned apartment at the time. Mm -hmm. And thank God that, you know, I got away from there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I just staying outside of those apartments, you know, uh, going waiting on a ride to go to anger management mm -hmm. they, i got beat up mm -hmm. we're just standing out there okay they gave me sometimes people out there would give me food mm -hmm. and they gave me a cup you know something to drink and I had mm -hmm. some stuff in it mm -hmm. 
So and that's how you got the the meth methamphetamine into your system was fake that somebody gave you something. The way. That's fine. Right. Can you get this perfect? So are you asking the judge? Well, you I made you aware of Mr. Witness. Helms' offer in this case five years my my the TDC judge. Uh, did you say you wanted the opportunity to go directly to the court, right? Right. And you currently on deferred adjudication. Are you asking the court if the court will not keep you on deferred to consider straight probation and give you an opportunity to get back on your feet? Can I do that on an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon? You cannot, Judge. Are you asking to continue on on, on probation? Yes. I uh, so, so, towards <laughs> when I when I got arrested, I'm I'm working, I'm working now, and I've got an apartment. So you say you got a where, where would your apartment be if you would get out? Of Forty one thirty six Avenue. It's a garage apartment, and that's located in what city? Port Arthur. So you got a place to live? Yes. And will you and have I have a job now? Gotcha. And you got what will you be working? I'll be working for a renovation company and they paint and renovated houses, mm -hmm. the interior. Mm -hmm. We just did um we just did um this report author mm -hmm. uh, Nicky's Lounge. Okay. Johnny is the owner. I know what that and is. For the city of Port Austin. Work for him. Uh, and the biggest thing I see you on probation for the aggravated assault. While you've been on probation, have you Got any kind of fights? Have you no, threatened anybody? No. Have you done anything that would involve violence? No. So, if the court considers keeping you on probation, would you be a threat to anybody? No. Would you try to harm anybody? Mm -hmm. And from what your testimony I heard is, is when you were at Lewis Manor, you in fact got beat up, right? Yes. And did this happen on more than one occasion or just one time? Happened twice, right? And did that have a bad impact on you? Even my probation officer was like, I asked her, you know, I asked her, and even when I went to anger management classes, like, she said, mm -hmm. they could help me. Like, like, well, find the place to, to live, work, and you know, they just. But you said you've been working. Huh? I thought you said you'd been working. Oh yes, I mean I, I recently. Well, got, what's your story? Either recently people have myself. to help you get work, or do you have a job? I have a job. How long have you been working with them? I've been working with them for um, like three months now. Okay, how much has he paid in the last three months? In the last three months? Yes, ma'am. Nothing. That's, well, that's odd. He's working. <laughs> I, 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 think, I, th I thought you said you had an income. Yes, it isn't. Much. Oh, well, what's your? Are you making this stuff up as we no, go? Sir. Well, it sounds like a little smoke being blown in my face here. But you, what? Well, you're supposed to turn yeah, you know, monies, some monies, over a fair amount of monies toward. You got restitution here, a ton of restitution. You cut up a man pretty good, and. My goodness, that's uh, but you're you, you're you're kind of whining about not have a place to stay, but you're working. You've been working for months. You said it's a pretty good job, but none of that money has found its way toward the probation office as you were required to pay. Sometimes I have to wait for two weeks. I'm talking about the last three months. It's. I've only been there about like two and a half months, but we get paid every like every two weeks. What's your final answer on that story? Is it three months or is it two and a half months now? Two and a half months. Okay. So I guess my last question to you is: is that you're asking um, the court to keep you on probation and not send you to uh, prison up to twenty years? I know you said no to the five year offer, but could you say in your own words why you ask him not to go to prison? If I've ever been in a shock state, this is it. 
and I'm not a, not a bad person, and I, I've never ever had any any kind of record other than tickets. Let me see that. And I, I will get on track, and I ask a second chance for the mercy of tickets. Of Hold on, let's fix this here. <laughs> Okay, and you got a family assault in 98, $650 fine, 20 days in jail for driving while intoxicated, uh, while license suspended in 2005. That's just not a ticket, that's jail. 2007, 30 days in jail for driving while license invalid. Also on that, driving while license suspended, you picked up two sets of sentences of 30 days in jail in each of those. Then in... Uh, 8 29 2007 six months later driving while license invalid five days in jail these are not tickets sir these are actual confinements tickets are where you pay fine only then you had oh, a dwi in galveston county eight days in jail in 2018 and a driving while intoxicated second degree second time here in jefferson county 45 days in jail uh, failures to appear, 20. Now, traffic offenses, 28. Yes, and then alcohol, open container, public intoxication, theft, that puts you over the 50 mark for, for those kinds of Class C misdemeanors. But you've been in, uh, to jail on several cases. So don't tell me it's raining when it's really not raining. Yes, sir. You got to be, you, you're under oath. You're supposed to be, really, I'm going to make a decision on your life, and you're trying to fudge and trying to blow smoke in my face. That's what you're doing. Oh, I've just told you things that are incorrect from what you said. They're blatant falsehoods, and nobody knows more about your life than you. All right, that is true. I, though it was well, I, hate, I mean, you got to be forthright with me. My goodness, keep going. I, I was the last question. I had. Let me have the probation office. I want to hear, hear some feedback. Uh, how would you um, summarize his probation? June of 23, he reported and he was informed of his court date at that time. He also reported he was homeless and he was referred to rescue missions and he refused to go. He was also referred to Texas workforce and he never gave any indication that he ever went. Okay. Is that true or not, sir? I, I can't imagine my probation officer would be telling. She has no reason to lie. She she is trying to help you be successful. She hates to see anybody fail. I know her. I, I, we have an 85% success rate with probation. Uh, so she's telling me things differently from what you just told me under oath. Uh, I, I did. I went and I did tell my probation officer I was homeless, but the rescue mission didn't have nowhere to go. They didn't have no room at the time. Well, you're not going to, your probation is not violated for being homeless. That's not a condition of probation. We want you to be successful and try to help you, but homeless is not, being homeless is not a violation of probation. I'm talking about all the other things. You've pleaded true to one, two, three, four violations. All right. And anyway, anything else? I ask for your mercy, sir. And to to start to to pay to to get on track. I have a, a, a place now and I have where to work. I know, but you're making that promise, but you had money in your hands for three months and that never found its way to the probation office to take care of your obligations. Right. You've been on probation, what, two? Three, two months, and 
uh, two years and three months. I ask for your mercy, Mr. Stevens. Um, that's 27 months of opportunity to show what you can do. Or stay close. Judge, uh, I want to point out to the court um, that the defense chose never to address the drug issues. That's a problem. That's okay. Num number two, whenever we were here previously back in um, February of 23, Your Honor, uh, chose to keep him on probation. It was an unagreed plea, much like we're doing right here. This man went without reporting from April 25th of 2022 uh, up until he was arrested in September of 22. And then he appeared in, um, I'm sorry, MTRP was filed in September of 22. He wasn't arrested until January of 23rd. So my point there is that he went nine months without supervision, not reporting. And I remember your honor addressing all that with him about how he needed to take care of that. And the reason why I'm highlighting that is because we got the same problem again. Everything we just heard doesn't even address what it is that it amounts to. He, he has no intention of following through and taking care of this. He has now successfully gone without reporting except for the one time that Miss Georgia told the court about in June, in all of 23. So although he's been on probation for a period of two years, he's gone all that time frame without reporting, doing whatever he wanted to, which includes using drugs. This offense itself, whenever he stabbed this poor innocent man up over no reason, the only reason why I granted him a, an offer of probation from the state's perspective was because of the amount of restitution that was due. It also took into account his lack of felony history, but he had plenty of misdemeanor history. That offense itself warrants the five years that I suggested would be appropriate. I stand by that offer as a resolution today. Judge, uh, I think that from Mr. Ham's argument and his timeline, they, they match up because from what he said was he moved in with his brother in March. And then as I understand it, he was homeless as of April. So in response to Mr. Hamilton, whether it's important or not, as I understand it, he's homeless as of April. He doesn't have transportation. He doesn't have, he got beat up twice in Lewis Manor apartments. And then as far as addressing the drug issue, I think I think what they said was is that someone had given him some, I mean, you heard the testimony. I mean, you remember what he said. I think he said something to the effect that somebody had given him something. That's he his did. story, right? But so, but, but he did respond to the to the issue of how the drug got into the system. Uh, he's just asking now that uh, he wants to move far. He seems remorse to me. I mean, you looking at him with your own eyes. I mean, he he appears to be very remorseful to me, and he appears as though everybody appears be. remorseful in front of this court, for the most part, right? So I think that his last statement to you was is that he's begging you for mercy. That's that I think that's the last thing he said. All right. Anything else? If not, I'm going to find that there is sufficient evidence supporting this first amended motion to revoke unadjudicated probation to grant it by a preponderance of the evidence or greater, as allegations five, six, seven, and eight have been proven true. And Thus, the defendant's deferred or unadjudicated probation is hereby revoked. Earlier in this case, Mr. Garza pleaded guilty voluntarily. He was mentally competent to do so. He understood the consequences of pleading guilty. There was sufficient evidence supporting his guilty plea from State's Exhibit 1 admitted to find him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I now find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this aggravated assault with the use of a deadly weapon, namely a knife. And I hereby find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You are hereby sentenced as your probation is now revoked to confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve a term of five years. You will give, be given credit for all time you have served in accordance with this case. And again, a deadly weapon, namely a knife, will be affirmatively shown on uh, the judgment. How much is his restitution left? Balance is $13,256. And restitution, 
is assessed and in the judgment at thirteen thousand two hundred and fifty six dollars. Anything else? That is all. Thank you. All right. Uh, I have Angela Ashy. Twenty three five seven. What's up? Sorry. What are we going to do on Angela? Ashy. There's been um. This, it's long story cut short. I believe that the judge needs to have her examined. Um. The, she was on the list through Spindle Talk for a state bed at this.